Welcome back. Today marks the 75th anniversary of the mass displacement of Palestinians. It's known as the Nakba, or the catastrophe. It is when some 750,000 Palestinians were forcibly expelled from their homes or fled when the state of Israel was created back in 1948. For the first time, the United Nations is commemorating the anniversary in an effort to shine a light on one of the longest standing refugee crises. NBC News foreign correspondent Raf Sanchez joins us now from Tel Aviv with more on this. So Raf, first of all, talk to us about what this Day Nakba means for Palestinians and just how significant it is for the UN to actually commemorate the events. Hey, Joe, good morning. Yeah, the Nakba is really kind of an open wound for Palestinians. And every, day, every year when this day comes around, it is a reminder that Palestinians still do not have a state of their own and that there has been no solution to that refugee crisis where hundreds of thousands of people were displaced from their homes and then unable to return to them after the state of Israel was founded. In terms of this event at the UN, it is symbolic that the UN is for the first time officially commemorating the Nakba. There there are no votes or anything scheduled alongside it. It doesn't look like there's going to be any policy progress. It's not going to make much difference to the lives of individual Palestinians. There are marches today planned in both Gaza and in Ramallah, but they're on a relatively low scale as this solemn anniversary goes by. Guys. Yeah, Raf, I mean, it feels like a good moment to reflect on, on where we are with this crisis in this area. Some argue that this has never really ended. Palestinians are still being evicted from their homes in these occupied territories. Is there any hope or any closer to a solution in this region? It certainly doesn't feel like it here on the ground. In the 90s and the early 2000s, there seemed to be kind of a consensus around what was called the two-state solution, the idea that you would have an independent Palestinian state alongside Israel. That policy now feels like it's in tatters. Israeli settlements, as you said, continue to expand in the occupied West Bank on the lands that a future Palestinian state would be built on. There's very little trust between the two sides. Israel says it was deeply scarred by the wave of Palestinian suicide bombings back in the 2000s. And now we have the most far-right government in Israel's history. There are a lot of settlers in the government itself. This is not a government that is committed to a Palestinian state. And you have a White House that on paper still supports the two-state solution, but in reality isn't putting a whole lot of political capital behind it. Guys. So, Raf, all this comes after the truce between Israel and Islamic Jihad in Gaza came into effect over the weekend. That followed five days of cross-border mm -hmm. fighting. Is the ceasefire holding right now? What's the latest? Yeah, Joe, so you'll remember we were on air together last week and there were explosions going on around us in Tel Aviv as rockets were coming over the city. I am able to report it is sunny and it is quiet here in Tel Aviv today. There was a single rocket fired yesterday from northern Gaza. It landed in an open area in Israel. Israel responded with some fire against Hamas military posts inside Gaza, but it has not broken the ceasefire and things remain for the most part quiet. Guys. All right, Raf, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.